prospect in our ESPN 300, running back Devwa Whaley. Devwa, you are down to Georgia, Texas, and Arkansas. Where will you be headed to school? First off, I just want to thank God, my parents, my family, my friends, my coaches, everybody that supported me through this process. It's been a long journey, but, you know, now it's time to finish it. All right, let's do it. So without further ado, I'll be further in my degree and playing football at University of Arkansas. You were a former Georgia commit. You decommitted after the coaching change. I know there was maybe some pressure on you to stay in state there in Texas. Why was Arkansas ultimately the right spot for you? you no, know, I just feel like that's the best place for me. Best fit for me all around. Great coaching staff. And, you know, just to help me further my degree and get to the next level. They've had some success there at Arkansas. And Brett Bielema certainly developing some running backs. You would think that would continue here with Devil Whaley. Congratulations. Thanks for sharing it with us. Thank you. Devra Whaley, number three running back, top 50 prospect, one of the stars of tomorrow on display today. Things are possible. You play for an audience of one. Don't let this moment pass you by. Keep pressure. Are you This is the Under Armour All-America football game presented by American Family Insurance. Team Highlight and Team Armour getting together in midfield. Heisman Trophy winners have come through here. Number one overall draft picks as well, and we'll see who ends up doing that out of this group. Good afternoon, Jason Benetti with ESPN National Recruiting Director Tom Luganville, National Recruiting Coordinator Craig Haubert. Tom, you got so much elite talent on this field. What are scouts looking for? What's the one attribute? Uh, competitiveness. No question about it. In fact, I would also add mental toughness there. Every one of these prospects you're going to see on hand here can play physically. That's not the question. But in the climate that we're in and the coverage of recruiting and the recruitment of the student athlete, there can be a sense of entitlement. Nobody wants to earn anything. So coaches want to see who's willing to earn it, who's willing to compete, who's got mental toughness, how do you respond when things don't go your way. This entire week, that's all I've paid attention to. We've seen all these guys on tape. We know what they can do athletically. It's those other intangible factors that will determine their fate. And right now they're becoming a part of something bigger with the pedigree of this game. Jason, there has been no shortage of competitive playmakers right. that have played in this game. The list of alumni making an impact in college and the NFL speaks for itself. Included in that group was four of the top six overall picks in the 2015 NFL Draft, led by the number one overall selection, Jameis Winston. But do not worry because the future looks very bright as well with this group. And it really, when I look at the ESPN 300, it's the defensive line that stands out. We will see four five-star defensive linemen take part in this game and is led by Rashawn Gary, the number one overall player in the nation. And for me, as good of a number one overall as we have ever had. Some big-name coaches in this game once again. Five seasons plus for both of them. Herm Edwards in his fifth season, the former NFL head coach, Jets and Chiefs, our colleague. And then over on the other side, Steve Mariucci in his sixth season. They really approach this in two separate ways sort of with Mariucci's energy and Herm Edwards a little more philosophical. Well yeah and the, the thing that's great about it is you've got a wealth of experience not only in the game but in life and how life and the game interact to each other. You've got multiple NFL coaches throughout both staffs so these kids have had a real treat and have had a lot of wisdom imparted upon them throughout this entire week leading up to the game. Devin Duvernay, Deontay Mullins couple of talented wide receivers back to receive the kickoff from the Citrus Bowl as we close out the season with a ball off the tee. <laughs> Nothing's more anticlimactic than a horizontal football and a kickoff. Logan Tyler, the Florida State commit, learning exactly how to tee up a ball. We've had a lot of luck with Florida State commit kickers as alumni. Of course, Dustin Hopkins was a tremendous performer for the Seminoles. An alumnus of this game a few years back. Two Florida State commit kickers in the game this year. Tyler, one of them, 
And off we go in the ninth annual Under Armour All-America football game. And an up man takes it. That's Dev Waley who just makes his commitment and takes the kickoff near the 45-yard line. And we'll see Dwayne Haskins and the team highlight offense. One of the top passers in the country. Haskins number three in the pocket passer. You'll see pocket passer and dual threat quarterback. What's the difference? Well, dual threat is a little bit more of a athletic quarterback who can run, make plays with his arm as well. Pocket pass a little bit more of the traditional drop back and throw, but that does not mean a pocket passer can't be athletic or vice versa. And first carry, we see the defensive line strong early on with Mikhail Carter over with Antonius Clayton on the tackle of Whaley. Yeah, Antonius Clayton has had a great week throughout the week, but as a pass rusher, we see him there at the point of attack in the run game as we see an initial run play offensively for the offense here. Boy, the defensive line owned the game on both sides last year. I really believe that there's a narrower gap between the defensive line and the offensive line here in this year's game. Quick throw for Haskins, a little bit low to the far side, but on target from the Maryland commit as he hits Nikhil Harry, the Arizona State commit, the wide receiver. And you talk about the defensive lineman, take a look at the top ten here. It it's really is the foundation of this class. There are so many great big men, especially on the interior. Nick Bosa, an Under Armour All-American, unfortunately injured. Ed Oliver, Rashawn Gary, they have been disruptive all week long. And McTelvin Aguim, we saw Arkansas pick up a commit here at the beginning of the game. Aguim has already been on campus, an early enrollee. Haskins again, quick throw and a first down to Harry once more. His second catch, this one goes for not in a first down. I like the play call so far for team highlight. Get the quarterback in a rhythm, uh, not get him under duress in, in pass pro. And this is just the, the basic hitch route out to the Arizona State Sun Devil commit. Nikhil Harry, a big physical specimen, and this is a playmaker the Sun Devils need. That has been one thing with, that was lacking with their offense this year in the Pac-12 was that go-to difference maker in the passing game. Saw Jalen Strong a couple years ago. Maybe he ends up fitting that type of mold as Whaley takes the run for three yards. Not just a playmaker, Tom, but an in-state playmaker, and that is what is so key yep. for Arizona State is stopping those top prospects like a Christian Kirk of getting out of the state. And Nikhil Harry, they keep one of the top players in the state of Arizona close to home. Certainly the offensive line asserting itself a little bit here early for team highlight, allowing Devil Whaley the newly minted Arkansas verbal commitment to gain a good four yards there on first down. He's anything like Ronald Jones from last year. Jones made his commitment and dashed off for a 60-plus yard touchdown run. Oliver in pursuit of Haskins, and he's too long on second down. Ed Oliver providing the pressure, one of the top defensive tackles in the country. Well, he's just following precedent he set throughout the week. He is so explosive and athletic. Getting off the football, you're going to see just the push and the drive, the split, the guard. And then Dwayne Haskins, we labeled him a pocket passer, but you see there the athleticism yep. to create a second chance. You know what I liked? I liked Ed Oliver redirecting and running down the play. He had the penetration. He could have just turned around all the quarterbacks out of the pocket. He finished. That kind of leads to that temperament I was talking about. Competitive, the will to succeed. That's what you want to see out of these young guys. What does that tell you about a kid's prospects in college and deeper, the competitiveness? Well, I think it's huge. I think it's one of the most undervalued evaluation tools as we see Dwayne Haskins here throwing late as he's flushed to the pocket, trying to hit Devil Whaley down the sideline. To me, uh, all these guys are so physically gifted, but whether it's been a Leonard Fournette who we had here two years ago, okay, or whether it was an Andre uh, or Amari Cooper, those guys had something a little different. It wasn't just about skill or athleticism or speed. There was a true passion for the game. They knew nothing was going to be handed to them, and that's one of the reasons why you see if you get into a situation with a nice fit, you have an opportunity to make an impact early. The Wake Forest commit, Dom Maggio, on to punt for the first time today for Team Highlight. Chauncey Gardner back to receive for Team Armor. And a strong punt there from Maggio, the Maryland native. And you talked about the talent that's come through here. This is the ninth year of the game, 94 NFL draft picks, 23 in the first round, and a couple of first overall picks. Yeah, 23 first round picks, but the last two number one overall picks in the NFL draft have both been Under Armour All-American alum. Uh, Jameis Winston being one this past year, Jadavion Clowney two years ago. Gives you an idea of not only the caliber of player uh, in this, in this uh, event, but when you look at these numbers, it's also an unbelievable indication 
of just how small, minuscule percentage of players that will have the opportunity to play at the next level. So if you want to have that hope, it's not just about being a player. It's about being a student. It's about understanding all the social issues that go along with it, making choices. We saw that happen with TCU this past week in Trevon Boykin. So those are things we've tried to impart on these players throughout the week here. Something that came up with Herm Edwards in one of his conversations with the players, the Boykin situation, as we see the top running back of the country, Kareem Walker, who was down. And Walker has caused some consternation in the Big Ten. He was an Ohio State commit. He is no longer. He's a Michigan verbal now. Well, he's been very popular this week in his movement throughout the hotel to see who he may be hanging out with <laughs> because one of the big Michigan targets taking part in this game is the number one overall player, Rashawn Gary. Both of those young men, Walker and Gary, out of New Jersey, uh, don't go to the same high school but live in close proximity and know each other. See 55 in white on that defensive line. That is Rashawn Gary. And here's Walker out in space to the 12. Got a block from Tyree Cleveland on the edge. And the tackle for Nigel Knott, the uncommitted number four cornerback. It actually loses yardage here. Nigel Knott there coming up. A really aggressive player on the perimeter. And what these players have found out through the week, and what you saw right there, is the gap has closed significantly. It's not just going to be easy. You're not just going to separate. You're not just going to run away from people. The speed on the field and, and the aggressiveness and the toughness and the physicality of the game has been ramped up tenfold this week. So over the course of time, over nine years now, how have you seen players adjust to that? It's the best thing that could possibly ever happen to them. And we'll get into that a little bit more in relationship to how it prepares you, especially for those guys that are early enrollees. Woody Barrett, the quarterback, the Auburn commit. A little bit high and incomplete. Levante Taylor was hard charging the Florida State verbal commit in the top corner in the country. Yeah, they're, they're trying to go with short passes to nullify that pass rush. Right. But when you do that and you've got corners like Levante Taylor, the top rated corner in the nation that can close like that, it can be even difficult to try to get those short completions. And you want to talk about a phenomenal athlete. A 42-inch vertical for Levante Taylor. He runs a four, almost a four-flat short shuttle, a 4-3-4-40. He's got all the tools. Even talking to Deion Sanders during the week, he, he quickly realized who number five was. Well, keep in mind, Minka Fitzpatrick at Alabama already making an impact. What Vernon Hargraves was able to do during his career at the University of Florida. A slew of others. Kevin Tolliver at LSU is a true freshman this year. We think Levante Taylor could be the same type of impact player. We may see his speed in play. On uh, this punt return, a little short for him to do that from Braden Mann. And good field position on the way. Four-team highlight, 31-yard punt, no return. You know, they're learning about themselves, too, but they're having a good time at the Under Armour All-America game. The ninth annual here in Orlando, no score. I'm from Tom Luganbill's hotel room that said swag on it, and they put it right in front of all the jerseys and everything. That's maybe the best part of the game for, the, for these players off the field, at least, right? I only loan it for one day. Yeah, well, it, it was costly, too. You should have seen the invoice. <laughs> Do not remit is your middle name. <laughs> Second possession for team highlight, and B.J. Emmons, the Alabama commit, in at running back. His first carry is a dandy. Saw a lot of... Up and back on that run and the tackle for Shane Simmons, the Penn State commit. And it's going to be Ed Oliver who is going to initially disrupt the play. You see in the right side of your screen, Woo! pushing him back, knocking the pulling lineman over. Nice job by Emmons, keeping it alive. You're going to see Shane Simmons, the Penn State verbal commit. High motor player staying in the backside, making the tackle. B.J. Emmons is a load, thick, strong lower body, a power load carrier, not too dissimilar to Damian Harris, the true freshman playing for Alabama this year that took part in the game a year ago. Yeah, we saw Harris last year as Landon Rice, the tight end, makes the grab and Auburn commit. One of the things I think that Emmons is going to bring to that backfield that Harris does is the hands. Yes. I think Emmons is a little bit more of a well-rounded back, could be that third down option because he does have – good ball skills. We transition from B.J. Emmons, an Alabama commit, to Landon Rice, the tight end, the Auburn uh, commit, a position of significant need for the Auburn Tigers. They want to have that movement H tight end guy to go with their two-back play action version of the spread offense. A wonderful looking player on the hoof. We think he's got tremendous upside, not only as an inline blocker, but as a threat downfield in the passing game. Maybe three different positions at Auburn as a possibility for Rice, and they'll keep it on the ground for Emmons on the run, and he looks like he's short. The defensive line wins that time. 
Let's see their four down territory right here. Look at the defensive front. No push from the offensive line. Mikhail Carter.